Namaste, dear students. Welcome to English class. So first of all, I just like to ask you a question. Last time you learned in Unit 3 the conversation between the reporter and Dr. Imran about the disease bird flu. So today also we are going to learn something of Unit 3. So can you guess what are we going to learn now? All right, fine. So I just like to show you the picture and you can guess what we are going to learn today. <clears throat> Look at the picture, my dear students. What can you see there? Yes, there is a fish. And is there only a fish? What thing else is there? OK, good. There is a boy. And what is he doing? Yes, he is fishing. And can you tell me what is he keeping there? Yes, that is a thread. And at the end of the thread, there is a hook. Do you know why do we use hook? And why the man is using their hook? Yes, he is using that one just to kill the fish. So can you guess the topic, what we are going to learn today? Yes, we are going to learn the poem, The Foolish Fish, which I just like to show you. Dear students, yes, you are right. We are going to learn about the poem, The Foolish Fish. So before starting this poem, I just like to ask you a question. So can you remember the rhyme which is very popular among the children? The rhyme is twinkle, twinkle, little star. Can you sing it? OK, let's sing it together. <clears throat> twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. <clears throat> Can you tell me who composed this poem? Yes, the poem was composed by N and Jane Taylor. So do you know something about N and Jane Taylor? Can you guess? Can you tell me something more about N and Jane Taylor? All right, now I'm going to tell you short introduction about N and Jane Taylor, okay? Anne was born in 1782 and she was died in 1866. She was an English poet and a literary critic. Do you know the meaning of literary critic, my dear students? Literary critic means a person who tries to find out weaknesses and strengths of literary items written by other people. So the relationship between Anne and Jane Taylor, they are sisters. Anne was the elder sister of Jane Taylor, and these sisters contributed a lot, especially for the children in the literature. So I have already told you that a popular rhyme written by them was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and so many others. And among them, today we are going to learn about the foolish fish. All right? <clears throat> so my students, first of all, I just like to recite the poem. And after that one, again, I will recite line by line, and you have to follow me. So let me recite, and you listen to me very carefully. Is it OK? So let me recite it. Uh, the title is The Foolish Fish. So listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> Dear mother, said a little fish, is that a worm I see? I'm very hungry, and I wish you would get the worm for me. Sweet innocent, the mother cried, and started from her nook. That worm you see is there to hide uh, the sharpness of a hook. Uh, as I have heard, the little trout was young and foolish too, and presently he ventured out to learn what might be true. Around about the worm he played with many a longing look, and dear me to himself he said, I'm sure there is no hook. I think I'll give one little bite, and that was what he did, and thus he died in helpless plight by not doing as he was bid. <clears throat> so now, again, I just like to make a practice of recitation. So I will recite it line by line, and you just follow me, all right? OK, my students, let me recite the first line. The title is The Foolish Fish. <clears throat> Dear mother, said a little fish, now you Tell after me. 
Dear mother, said a little fish, is that a worm I see? I'm very hungry and I wish you would get the worm for me. Sweet innocent, the mother cried and started from her nook. That worm you see is there to hide the sharpness of a hook. As I have heard the little trout was young and foolish too. And presently he ventured out to learn what might be true. Around about the worm he played with many a longing look. And dear me to himself he said, I'm sure there is no hook. I think I'll give one little bite. And that was what he did. And thus he died in hapless plight by not doing as he was bid. So is it, uh, now can you recite like that one? Okay, two minutes time for you to recite. Please recite the poem once again. <clears throat> well, my dear students, I have just recited the poem, but I haven't told you what is there in the poem. So first of all, I just like to ask you the question. So can you tell me the relationship between these two fish? Yes, that may, be, that may be true. And can you tell me which one is the baby fish there? The first one or the second one? Yes, you are right. The first one is the baby, sea, baby fish. Sorry. And which one is the mother fish? Definitely, the mother fish is the second one. So looking at the picture, I think you can say, is there any danger for the baby fish? What's happening there? Yes, you can see there is a boy and he is keeping a hook there. Do you know why is he keeping a hook there? Yes, just to kill it. But at the same time you can find there is no hook because the mother fish is matured. And you can compare between these two fish that the baby fish is innocent, immature, but the mother fish is matured, you know. <clears throat> so. There is like a short conversation between the baby fish and the, you can say, mother fish in the poem. So later on, I'll tell you the main lesson given by the poem also, okay? So <clears throat> it is written, see, the baby fish is very hungry and it likes to have something. It wants food, but at the same time, there is not. And at the same time, the baby fish sees a worm there and it wants to have that one because why does it want to have that worm? Because it is very hungry. Okay? That's why it is requesting to its mother that just to bring that worm for it. And do you think that the mother allows him to get that food? Well, do you think that the mother herself brings the food for the baby fish? So what happened? Let's see. So the mother says that, see, dear mother said a little fish, is that a worm I see? I'm very hungry and I wish. It means that the baby fish is very hungry and it wants to have something. It has a wish to get that worm. And it says to its mother to bring that worm. See what mother said? Sweet innocent, the mother cried and started from her nook. The, that worm you see is there to hide. So mother says that, the mother fish says that, that is not just only the worm. That worm is covered with the hook and someone is there from the corner and who wants to kill you, who wants to kill you with the help of hook. So that is not just the worm, there is danger for you. So my dear innocent person, my baby, you should not go that one. It is very dangerous for you and someone is there to kill you. Uh, so the hook is very sharp also because that can, uh, you can say hook in the tongue and that can kill the fish, that can kill you. That's why you should not have that wish to get the worm because that is very dangerous and someone is behind us to kill us. That's why you don't need to go, just tolerate your hunger. The mother is suggesting and at that time, <clears throat> as I have heard, the little trout was young and foolish too. So the baby fish was young and it was foolish because it is not matured enough. 
it is not experienced. So we have to always listen to our parents. And presently, he ventured out to learn what might be true. And at that time, the baby fish is extremely hungry. So it likes to have that one because it cannot bear its hunger. That's why it itself tries to come out from its place in order to get that worm. Are you understanding me? Are you getting the idea? Yes. So it comes out from its place and it tries to catch that worm. As soon as he tries to catch that worm, at that time he is hooked. So that is what written here, see. Uh, Tulan, uh, so it does not believe its mother. That's why it comes out to catch the worm. And finally, it wants to see that whether that is true or not. Whether that is real, the hook or not. Whether that is really the worm or not. It wants to find out. It wants to know that one. That's why it comes out. Around about the worm, he played with many a longing look because it has an extreme desire to get that one. That's why the mother's advice does not stop the baby fish to come out in order to get the worm. Are you understanding me? Okay. So it itself says again, and dear me to himself, he said, I'm sure there is no hook. Now the baby fish thinks that there is not any hook. There's a worm that must be its food and it wants to have that one because it's very, yes, hungry. <clears throat> I think I'll give one little bite. As soon as it reaches very near to the worm, it wants to give a bite because it's very hungry, because it cannot bear its hunger, and it does not listen to its mother fish, and it wants to have that one. And that was what he did, and thus he died in hapless plight by not doing as he was bid. His mother, tells him not to go there. His mother does not allow him to go there, but without obeying his mother, he goes out and he tries to cast the worm. And finally, he is hooked and he is died there because he does not follow the instruction given by his mother, because he does not obey his mother, because he disobeys his mother. So whether the end of the poem, is it nice or not? Yes, not nice. But why? Because there is the death of the baby fish. So why is he killed there? Can you tell me? Yes, he does not uh, follow his mother's instruction. He does not obey his mother. And why does not he obey his mother? Can you tell me now? Because he thinks that Whatever the advice given by his mother is not correct. Whenever he looks at the worm, at that time he thinks that that is just the worm. He does not think that there is the hook. So it wants to get that one. That's why it comes out just to have that one. And because of that reason, he is died because he disobeys his mother. Understood? So the writer, <coughs> the poet, and poets N and Zen Taylor want to convey us the message that we have to always listen to our seniors. We have to always uh, obey our seniors. We have to listen to our parents. We have to listen to our teachers. We have to listen to our seniors so that we can be safe. Why? Because they are very experienced. Because they have gone through our ages. They have, ex they have a lot of experiences. But we are left to get such experiences. We are left to get such types of maturities. That's why the, the innocent fish, the baby fish is died. So is the poem clear to you? If you have some questions, please, you can ask me questions. I enjoy with them. <clears throat> All right. If you don't have any problem, then let's go to the words. OK, some words problem. So I just like to show you. <clears throat> so dear students, you can find these words in the poem. So, or you can tell me <clears throat> the difficult words in the poem, which I just like to first underline. And you can tell me whether your words are similar to these or not. So once read it, please. Dear mother said a little face, is that a worm I see? So see, the word worm is there. It may be a difficult word for you. 
I'm very hungry and I wish you would get the worm for me. Sweet innocent, you can see innocent is there. <clears throat> the mother cried and it started from her nook. You can find the word nook here. That worm you see is there to hide. Hide is again here. The sharpness of a hook. Again, the sharpness, the word is here. Hook is here. As I have heard, the little trout. Trout again here. Was young and foolish too. Foolish, it's here. And presently he ventured out. So, another difficult word for you. Ventured. To learn what might be true. Around about the worm, he played with many a longing look. So there is another word for you, longing. And dear me, to himself he said, I'm sure there is no hook. Again, the word hook is here. I think I'll give one little bite. So bite is also there. And that was what he did. And thus he died in helpless. Again, you can see the difficult word for you, helpless. And another word is plight. By not doing as he was bid. So the word bid is here. So these are the difficult words for you, which I have enlisted here. You can see warm, innocent, nook, and you can find <clears throat> height, sharp, hook, trout, foolish, ventured, longing, bite, helpless, plight, bid. So first of all, before discussing about the words and meanings, you can find in this side, there are the meanings of these words and you have to find out. I'll give you the hints, okay? Before that one, first of all, I like to make, make you practice of pronunciation of these difficult words. So, first of all, I pronounce and you follow me, okay? <clears throat> Wom. Please pronounce the word. Okay, once again. Wom. Fine. Second word, innocent. So pronounce it again. Yes, you are right. Nook. Now pronounce the word. Yes. Nook. All right. Now next word is hide. Hide. Good. Another word is sharp. So say it again, sharp, yes. Another word is hook, pronounce it again, nice. Another word we have is trout, so pronounce it, trout, good. Next word is felice, pronounce please, felice. Okay, next word we have is ventured. <clears throat> Pronounce please. Once again, yes, that is ventured. Another word we have is longing. So what is its pronunciation? Yes, once again, longing, good. Next word we have is bite. So what is it? Bite. Okay, good. Another word we have is helpless. So what is its pronunciation? Helpless. Once again, please. Helpless. Once again, please. All right. Another word we have is plight. So pronounce it. Plight. Once again, plight. And the last word we have is bead. What is it? Bead. Once again, bead. All right, my students. These are the pronunciations of these words. So while you are speaking the words, while you are speaking in English at that time, you have to be able to pronounce the words very correctly. Okay? So let us discuss about words and meanings. <clears throat> so what do you think warm is? What do you think warm is? So I just like to give you a hint. Worm means it's a kind of insect. And can you find 
the word here insect so is it concealed or a curved piece of something a long thin creature with no bones a young child having little experience now can you guess yes it is a long thin creature with no bones it is in number three a long thin creature with no bones so you have to supply its number here so i just like to request you to note it down in your notebook also so the correct answer is number three see so what is the meaning of the word worm yes it is a long thin creature with no bones now let's talk about the second word the second word is innocent now can you guess the meaning of this word innocent so what can it be this is already done yeah so let me take it <clears throat> conceal a curved piece or i just like to give you the hints okay it begins with a and it ends with the letter e can you guess okay tell me once again yes you are correct so the answer of innocent or the meaning of the word innocent is a young child having little a young child or having little experience so what is its number number four so what i have to write here number four so it is also ticked so the third word we have is nook so what can be the meaning of nook you can see <clears throat> so what can it be conceal or a curved piece of something or having a fine laser point or corner that is hidden from other people or you can say dared use of teeth to cut food into pieces or you can see go number 9 10 11 12 and 13 14 yes you are correct the right meaning for the word nook is corner that is hidden from other people so what is its number number six yes you are correct so next word we have is yes hide and can you give me the meaning of this word so what is the meaning of this word hide so let's search conceal a curved piece of something and then uh, maybe uh, dared use of teeth to cut food into pieces or you can go some other words meanings yes the correct answer of the word hide is number one so what is its pronunciation conceal yes you are right so number one is the correct answer of hide so next word we have is sharp so i think it is easy to guess the meaning so can you tell me now yes it is absolutely you are correct so it is number five having a fine is a point so it is number five so let me write it <clears throat> Number six, next one is hook. So can you guess the meaning again? So which one is it? Conceal a curved piece of something or you can go? You are right. That is number two, a curved piece of something. So you have to write down here number two. Next one is trout. There are different types of fish, you know. Among them, it is one and it generally survives in the fresh water. So can you guess the meaning of this word? Okay, that is, you are right, that is number nine, a common fresh water fish. So you have to write down here nine. So next one is foolish, all right? So foolish, I think it's very simple, you know, you can guess easily, it is number 11, silly or stupid. So you have to write here 11. Now next one is, Ventured. So can you guess the meaning of the word ventured? Yes, that is again dared, number seven. <clears throat> now we have another word that is longing. So my dear students, tell me the meaning of the word longing. What did you say? Okay, you said that, where is it? Number... Uh, Number, 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 a strong, a strong feeling of wanting something or somebody, okay? This is the right meaning of the word longing, and it's number 
10. So next one we have bite. It's also easy, no? Whenever, if you get a cake at that time, you like to give a bite, you know? So there is somewhere you can find, 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 where is it? Yes, number eight. Use of teeth to cut food into pieces. So it's number eight. So the correct meaning of the word bite is use of teeth to cut food into pieces. Next word, we have helpless. So what is the correct meaning of the word helpless? So for helpless, you can find is, 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 where is it? Yes, not lucky or unfortunate. Okay, so the last number, it is 14. So you have to write here 14. <clears throat> the second last word we have, that is plight. So you can see we have two more words and you can guess easily, I think. So what can be the meaning of this word plight. So you can write it down, a difficult and sad situation, number 13. Now the last word that is beat. So I just like to give you, the mother does not beat the baby fish to go and have the worm. So what can you guess? Yes, that is, we have only one word, it is already ticked, we have only one word that is, it is also already ticked. So which one is left here? Uh, bid. Where is it? To tell somebody to do something. Okay, it is number 12. These are the meanings of the words. So my dear students, I just like to request you to write them down in your notebook and later on you have to do some more practices. You have to do some more exercise. Okay, my students, now I just like to request you to turn the page number 33 of your book. You can see there is a puzzle, crossword puzzle, which I just like to show you again. Okay, <clears throat> there is a crossword puzzle in your page number 33 and we are going to solve it now. So can you see here the crossword puzzle? All right, just below the puzzle, you can find the meanings and you have to find the words from the poem to supply in the crossword puzzles, okay? All right, now can you tell me, sewing the want for something very much. So you have to write it down for down crossword puzzle, okay? So it is number one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here is given seven. It means that the word consists of seven letters and you have to find it now. So what can be the word for this one? Okay, the word is <clears throat> longing. So what is the word? Longing, see, L-O-N-G-I-N-G, -G, longing. Previously also, we discussed the words and meanings. Now next you can see, a common fresh water fish. So what can be the word? The word is, yes, that is trout. So you can write T-R-O-U-T, trout. So what's the word? T-R-O-U-T, trout. Fine. Next we have dared. So you know the meaning of this word and the correct word for this is ventured. Okay. So spelling is B-E-N-T-U-R-E-D, ventured. So what's the word? Ventured. All right. Now next we have for down cross bar. Crossword puzzle, conceal. So you know the meaning? So the word for conceal is what? Hide, yes. <clears throat> H-I-D-E, hide. Now let's go to our cross. So there is written, having little experience of the world. So what's the word? Innocent, yeah? So you have to write down number five, I, N N O C E N T innocent. 
Now the last word we have that is unfortunate. So what is the word that consists of seven letters? So what is that? Uh, <clears throat> H A P L E S S hapless. So is it clear to you? Okay, my dear students, I request you to note it down in your notebook so that you can practice in your house. Now, I just like to tell you briefly about the questions. There is given number A, what does the baby fish want the mother fish to do? Okay, question number one, A is given there, what does the baby fish want the mother fish to do? Simply answer is that the baby fish wants its mother to bring the worm. Okay, so you write this answer in your home assignment. Likewise, second, why does the baby fish want to get the worm? You know that it's hungry. Okay, number three, does the mother fish get the worm for a young one? Why, why not? The mother fish does not do that one because there is a danger for them. There is a hook. <clears throat> the, the second last question, why was the young trout foolish? Because it is not experienced, because it was innocent, it was not matured. All right? And the last question, what lesson does the poem teach us? Can you tell me? Yes, you are correct. The lesson is that we have to always obey our parents, teachers, seniors. If we don't obey, then we have to face the difficult situation. So we have to face the consequences of our disobedience as the baby fish got in this poem. Is it clear, my students? So your home assignment is that just do the question answer and make the sentences of your one of the words which I have already given you. Have a wonderful day. This much for today. Bye-bye.